elevations, however, the island's appearance changes. Shrouded in deep mist, a living fossil has survived, the Monte Verde Cloud Forest. Laurel trees grow close together, forming an impenetrable thicket. The forests are a remnant of the tertiary era, the last of their kind on the planet. A rare bird inhabits the lower level of the forest where the vegetation is thinner. The laurel pigeon. Like the forest itself, the pigeon is also a living fossil. It arrived from Africa when the canaries were young. Cut off from the mainland for 20 million years, it can only exist in this restricted habitat. Of course, the animal most associated with the islands is the canary. This is its original ancestor, the Atlantic canary. Spanish explorers took the bird to Europe for its beautiful song and as a symbol of luxury and sophistication. Canaries like sweet things. They were once known as sugar birds. Today's canaries are still drawn to the ripe fruit of the arbutus tree. The fruit they drop is left behind for others. For example, the common chaffinch. You can't be too selective on an island surrounded by the ocean. Resources are scarce. You just have to adapt. From afar, it looks like a lush green paradise. But the area around El Taide is a barren volcanic desert. Freezing cold, blistering heat, thin dry air, and powerful ultraviolet rays are the lot of this volcano. The Mount Taide Bugloss can withstand the difficult conditions, growing a tower of red blossom three meters high. But it only manages this once in its life. Far from the mainland, different species developed with very specific abilities. On a rocky outcrop on Tenerife, 
lives one of the most endangered plants on Earth. Lotus maculatus. There are just 11 left in the world. This plant entered into a unique partnership to survive. With a reptile. The lizards feed on the plant's blossoms. The sweet nectar of the Lotus maculatus is especially tasty. The secret of the plant's survival? Its pollen is located on the tip of the blossoms. When the lizard stretches for the nectar, pollen is brushed onto its head. The lizard then moves on to the next plant and pollinates it. Without the lizards, Lotus maculatus couldn't reproduce. It would vanish forever. Life on the Canary Islands is dominated by lava and ash. At the foot of the volcanoes is neither water nor fertile earth. And yet, a tough fighter survives, the Canary Islands pine. This tree uses a strong taproot to anchor itself to the ground. Additional roots spread out in a wide network to gather nutrients from a broad area. Because the root systems are so expansive, there's plenty of space between the trees. The sparse pine forests around Mount Taida are home to a bird whose origins remain shrouded in mystery. The Tenerife Blue Chaffinch. The plumage of the males is a striking shade of blue. The chaffinches prefer mountainous regions, building their nests in the largest, oldest pines. And they're not the only birds here. These sparse forests are also inhabited by African blue tits, and woodpeckers. This young blue tit can already fly, but it still depends on its parents for food. The chaffinches, on the other hand, will breed later in the year. These females still have time for minor disputes. Finally, the moment arrives. Pine cone season. The seeds of the pine trees are rich in protein. The chaffinches have matched their breeding season to the life cycle of the trees. In summer, ripe cones fall to the ground. It's easy for the birds to get to the nourishing seeds. This is the perfect time to rear their young.
At heights of 2,000 meters and more, giant Canary Island pines withstand cold, heat, and drought. But living in a volcanic neighborhood can be extremely dangerous. Glowing lava ignites whatever it touches. Volcanic eruptions destroy everything in their path. Fires spread unhindered, scarring the landscape. Once the fire has run its course, the full extent of the destruction becomes apparent. The Canary Island pines are the only life left standing. Their bark protected the sensitive pith. The secret of their survival lies in their needles that burn up fast and then extinguish. The flames have nothing to hold on to in the sparse forest and pass on. Fire brings new colors to the forest. For some plants, fire is a source of life, not death. The ashes leave minerals in the soil that help the plants to germinate. In summer, the cooler, damper Alisio trade wind reaches the northern side of the island. The steep slopes block its progress. Rising air cools and condenses. Thick clouds flow into the parched forests. In places, magical forests have sprung up, a far cry from the arid volcanic desert. Life in here is determined by the clouds. The mist helps lichen, ferns and moss grow on the trees. Here, the pine needles guarantee the existence of an evergreen paradise. The long, thin needles comb the clouds, creating water drops that fall directly onto the roots. Prefers running to flying. This graceful bird scans its surroundings for danger in an upright position, stretching its neck as high as it can. With its sand-colored plumage, it's almost invisible in the rocky scree. These birds lay their eggs in open terrain. The mother's soft plumage is their only protection in the harsh, stony desert.
cream-colored coursers are shy, quiet birds. But mothers encourage their unborn chicks with delicate, high-pitched calls. Soon, the offspring will reply. But first, they must survive the most perilous period. <coughs> Brown-necked ravens settle on an old volcanic cone. There's little to hunt in this landscape, but during the breeding season, the ravens target eggs and helpless chicks. The stone curlew does everything slowly to avoid drawing attention to itself. The brown-necked ravens continue to patrol the skies. When the courser feels threatened, it hunkers down, relying on its natural camouflage. But ravens are intelligent birds. They spot the slightest change in the surrounding landscape. Birds' eggs are easy prey. This time, the mother wasn't careful enough. She must watch as her brood is destroyed. For the others, the struggle for survival continues. This female is more fortunate. Her eggs have remained undiscovered so far. After three long weeks, the eggs will soon hatch. A storm has gathered in the North Atlantic. Now it sweeps the islands. Hurricanes whip the water into a frenzy. Temperatures drop below zero. A blizzard follows. Unheard of weather for the Canaries. The snow falls for days, 
Masses of cold air collide with the flanks of the high volcanoes. The fire mountains become a sea of white. Lower down, water cascades from the heights. The forest that usually survives on moisture from the clouds soaks up the excess water like a sponge. The colorful blossoms of the canary shrub mallow are bright spots in the monotonous green of the winter forest. There's a reason the plant has picked the winter to bloom. Its blossom attracts migrant birds. These plants have adapted to the pollinating birds. The chiffchaff is after the sweet nectar. As it reaches in, its head touches the plant's stamens, shaking the pollen loose, which it transfers to the next blossom. After days, the storm finally moves on. Temperatures rise rapidly. The snow will soon vanish, but for a while, El Taide shows a very unfamiliar face. Fuerteventura, too, the storm is over. The first cream colored Corsa has hatched from its egg, wet, blind, and completely helpless. This young bird can't survive without its mother's warmth. But it'll have to leave the nest in just a few hours. The mother must now pay close attention to the brood. The second chick will hatch at any moment. These stone curlews hatched at dawn. They're still a little unsteady. Their only protection is the camouflage of their mottled plumage. A raven is particularly keen on freshly hatched chicks. It's watching for telltale movements.
Meanwhile, the coarser chick's feathers have dried. The young bird is determined to explore its surroundings. The parents are now especially attentive, surveying the landscape. The second chick emerges from its egg. This is a critical moment. The mother immediately removes the bright eggshell. It mustn't attract the attention of the raven. It's early morning, and the stone curlews begin to coax their young out of the nest. They're barely able to stand, but it's time to explore. Step by unsteady step, the freshly hatched chicks make their way over the stony ground. With one just four hours old, the coarser chicks are also starting on their first journey. Using food as a lure, the parents lead their young as far from the nest as possible. It'll be four long weeks before they can fly and the greatest danger will have passed. 